You've heard the arguments before, the relaxation of drug laws around the world, which is becoming more and more popular by the day. But what would actually happen if a country legalised all drugs? Well, Ireland did. Once. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and in March 2015, newspaper headlines were reporting on the fact that Ireland had just legalised drugs. And no, I don't mean just some drugs, all the drugs. So, in some strange turn of events, they had accidentally legalised very dangerous drugs such as ecstasy, crystal meth and ketamine. Honestly, wouldn't surprise me if the flights to Ireland quadrupled overnight with this news coming out. Which to think how something like this could happen in the modern day is absolutely absurd, but that is what we're going to be exploring today, and discovering how this absolutely massive cock-up occurred in the first place. Ireland has the best associations with drinking copious amounts of alcohol, but just for the briefest moment, it was also known as the land of drugs or known as the country with the world's shortest period of drug legalisation ever. Of course, there's drugs as standard which are illegal for your protection because they are so bad that they will literally fuck you up everywhere you know. So of course there is a moral obligation on public bodies and authorities to implement laws to stop these drugs from getting into the hands of people who may be severely affected by them. The laws implemented in Ireland, such as the Misuse of Drugs Act 1977, were implemented to regulate drugs in the country and defines the penalties for the production, possession and supply of drugs that were deemed illegal. A pretty central and important law to regulate drugs in the country and defines much of how drug enforcement is undertaken. As a modern, stable democracy, this is a pretty standard law to have in place to make sure that these incredibly dangerous substances are kept out of public possession and to make sure that they aren't rampant in the country. The problem with this law and the way that it operated was that there is a finite list of drugs which were prohibited. And as the industry goes, new drugs in different forms and variations are being manufactured and sold every year. Stronger and more potent drugs become more easily available, causing the law in this area to have to constantly shift and evolve. So what they did was they kept adding drugs to the list and it kept adding and kept adding until they had a list as long as your arm as to the drugs and substances that are deemed illegal. So if you wanted to get your hands on a drug that is on that list, then sorry buddy, you've just committed a crime. The whole point of this law was to give cabinet ministers flexibility to keep adding new things to the list as time goes on, which you'd think is a pretty standard thing. All seemed to go well. That was until 2015, when a hearing at the Irish Court of Appeal was reviewing this law. Now, what I should explain is that with many systems like this, it is common for the government to pass legislation like it had done in this case. But there is something called judicial interpretation, where although the law has been drafted and signed off and put into law, the courts can form an opinion on the law and how it should function or how they believe it was intended to be implemented to be compatible with the rules of the land. So if you have a court case where there is a piece of law or legislation which is debated, then it is up to the court to decide how that law should function and how they believe it is intended to function. What this means is that if there's not been a precedent beforehand set for this particular rule, they might make a decision there and then. And if a law is deemed unconstitutional, technically, the court can nullify its effectiveness, meaning that it's just dead law. Right, this is important because the Irish Court of Appeal found that the Misuse of Drugs Act 1977 was actually unconstitutional. This was because of a constitutional oversight of how the government was structured, the powers that were held and how the list of drugs in the act was kept updated. You see, in Ireland, the government has many branches and bodies which are responsible for different areas. However, when it came to making the laws of the land, you need something called legislative power, which is only held by one part of the Irish government, that being the Parliament of the Oireachtas, which has the power to create laws, and the job of the government ministers is to enforce those very laws. The way this was interpreted, however, is that every time the ministers had added a new drug to the list, they weren't just enforcing the law, but by adding things to it, this was effectively amending and changing the law itself, which was seen as an overreach of power. This is not the power they're intended to have. 
which means it was deemed unconstitutional. Apologies for the long explanation, but it was necessary to inform you how this all works and how they've come up to this conundrum. And with the snap of their fingers, the judge had just made this law unconstitutional, meaning that the very law that regulated drugs in the country was effectively null and void. Yes, the very law that was intended to try and control the drug trade and keep dangerous substances out of people's hands allowed people to go around and use drugs willy-nilly. Every single dangerous drug that was on that list is no longer illegal, which is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I can just imagine drug dealers coming out of the dark alleys and getting their goods on public display in front of everybody because they know they can get away with it. So. How long did this drug paradise last for? One day. Yep, for one whole single day, the entire country was able to technically, legally have drugs, and drugs that were initially banned on this previously made law which was now unconstitutional. This is because the case that the Irish Court of Appeal was presiding over was known about, and emergency legislation was already ready in the event that the court found that the act was unconstitutional. What this means, however, is that even though the legislation was immediately enacted to make all the previously legalised drugs illegal again, there was a grace period of a day waiting for the next day to tick over before that law was legally enforceable. Yes, one whole day to live like Scarface. And, well, you can probably guess what happened next. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. Guys, guys, for context, it's, it's baking powder, okay? Don't worry, it wasn't anything worse. Please don't demonetize me. So yeah, that just about wraps things up. That was the one time Ireland legalized drugs for a single day. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. I can't believe I just ripped the bag open. I've got baking powder everywhere. Uh, I mean, obviously up here, but it, it <sighs> this can be an absolute mess. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.